Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, and also Ranking Member Moran for uh, organizing this hearing on this topic of Alzheimer's. It is very special to me because my own very dear father died of the uh, consequences of Alzheimer's now 25 years ago. So I've been at this a long time. And for many of us, we've had it either in our own families or people near and dear to us. And of course, there are marquee names that talk about this. Uh, Mrs. Reagan, um, Justice uh, Sandra Day O'Connor, uh, and others. But really, it's a, this is an equal opportunity epidemic. It hits people at all in income levels, and whether you were the President of the United States, like uh, President Reagan, or a small grocer businessman like my father, or like the men and women out here uh, in the audience who wear the purple sash, they know this tremendous impact on family life, the family budget, and ultimately on our budget. So I think we all do need a sense of urgency about how we can come to grips with this and accelerate uh, what we want to do. Uh, I want to welcome the witnesses here, um, Dr. Collins, Dr. Landis, Dr. Hodes. I was just at NIH uh, on Monday. I call it the, you know, I'm so proud of the fact that it's in Maryland. I call it the National Institutes of Hope. The National Institutes of Hope. And I think that's what brings all the men and women and family members here. Um, my question, because we've been able to do something in this year's appropriations, and I might add, every single senator up here is also a member of the Appropriations Committee. And uh, we can feel proud of the fact that we put close to $30 billion into NIH, a billion more than last year. Um, we increased the National Institutes of Aging by $100 million. We've included money for the uh, BRAIN initiative. So we think we're making that progress. And that comes to me, Dr. Collins, and other esteemed witnesses. Um, we would like to be able to accelerate these breakthroughs. What you just testified seems so promising. Um, but I feel that we also need a sense of urgency uh, because uh, we are facing an epidemic in this country. And the impact, again, on family budget and on our Medicaid budget because ultimately the impact of people being in long-term care. What, Dr. Collins, I, I rem remember with what Senator Harkin and Senator Specter did when they doubled it. Is it that we need more money? Do we need more people going into science? What do we need to put this on the fast track so that these promising breakthroughs, following all the rubrics of the scientific method, uh, how can we, because the clock is ticking, the numbers are growing. The poignancy is there. Could you share with how we can help move this along? Well, I appreciate the question, Senator, and it was great hosting you at NIH uh, on Monday. I think we are not at the moment limited by ideas. <laughs> We're not limited by scientific opportunities. We're not limited by talent. Uh, we are unfortunately limited by resources to be able to move this enterprise forward at the pace that it could take. And it would be, of course, uh, great to see that achieved, and it would actually, even setting aside the pressing need uh, for the benefits uh, to health, would also be a nice investment in our economy, since, as many of you know, uh, the way in which we put dollars into medical research pays back more than twofold uh, in just a single year. At the moment, people who have great ideas about Alzheimer's disease who come to NIH with those, and again, we have some ideas about areas that we think are exciting, but we also count on our community to come up with ideas that we, the three of us, couldn't necessarily have thought about, and to send us those, and we put them through the most rigorous peer review process. But their chance of getting funded right now is about one in six. One in six. So five out of six are going away with nothing. The community is incredibly struggling uh, and demoralized about that. You and I looked at this survey from the Chronicle of Higher Education on Monday that just came out on Monday, indicating what's happening uh, investigators in laboratories all over the country. Remember, NIH is not just in Bethesda. Most of our money goes out to all 50 states where this research is going on. And more than half of those investigators saying they've basically had to let somebody go, or they can't take on a student that they wanted to, or they're not going to start a project that they're excited about 
but they don't think they have the resources to do it. We are constraining uh, the energy, the innovation, uh, the, uh, the creativity of the most amazing engine for discovery the world has seen, which is America's science. But Dr. Collins, what you're saying is that young people are discouraged from coming forth because they don't think that there's gonna be the money there to fund their project. I see Dr. Hodes and Landis shaking their head. Yes. Is that right? So we have promising ideas, and people in our own country, in our own country, with these ideas ready to ro roll. Well, let me ask you this. The whole idea of doubling, I don't know, is in our fiscal cards. But I understand we shared an idea here that if we had stayed on the 3% growth initiated by Hark Inspector, mm -hmm. Where, where would we be now, at about $40 billion? If you look at that curve of what the trajectory was uh, prior to the 1998 doubling, it was about a 3% growth rate, uh, and that's accounting for inflation, so real growth in terms of purchasing power. If we'd stayed on that curve, we would now be just at about $40 billion. So it's $10 billion less than where we are for both not only at the National Institutes of Aging, but as you pointed out, this could be in a variety of other institutes, from Dr. Landis's on neurological behavior, every, everything. So here's my question. I understand you have a, a, an idea that if we took inflation plus 5% for about four years, we could get to where we ought to be. That would, if you do the math, uh, carry NIH back up to that $40 billion number, if it were possible to do that. And again, that's a decision that is up to the Congress, the administration, the American people. But I must say, from my perspective, the best thing we could do for science would be to get on that kind of a stable, predictable trajectory so we can plan more than three months at a time, so we can actually tell young people who are coming into the field, there's a career for you. America is going to invest in this. You can count on, if you have a great idea, you're going to be able to be part of an adventure that is going to be exciting and world-changing. Right now, people aren't quite sure. This up and down and uncertainty has really done quite a lot of damage uh, to the momentum. Well, thank you, Dr. Collins, and also the wonderful people there. My time is up. But I look forward to really, this seems to be an achievable goal if we put our minds to it. Thank you, Senator.